In this PhotoP tutorial, I'm going to explain the basics of PhotoP, explain what features are going to be useful for you, and I'll cover basically how you can use this as a beginner. So let's jump into it. So first, if you go to PhotoP.com, it will take you to this window. It's currently Christmas time when I'm recording, so they've got this nice sprinkly snow. But nonetheless, what you can do is you can go ahead and open a new project, you can open from computer, or you can open here from templates. Now you can open any of these file formats here, so it can open PSD files, and it's basically like the web-based version of Photoshop, to be honest. If we click on templates, you've got all of these templates that you can edit, including like mock-ups, and you've got here YouTube templates, different templates for social media. And this is quite new, so they're, they're adding templates as we speak. Now, most of you are going to want to start from a new project, and here you can choose more templates again, if you just want to set up a blank template, you can enter in your project name here. So I'm just going to put in test and I'm going to change the width to 1920 and the height here by 1080. That's going to be in a YouTube thumbnail dimension. So I can click create and we can start to create our image. Now, for the sake of the video, I'll just drag in an image. So I'm just going to go to unsplash.com, which is another good website to know, to be honest because here you can add royalty free images, like you can download royalty free images from here. So I'll just download this image of a keyboard and I'll use this keyboard to show you how you can upload photos. So if you go to photo P and you want to upload your own photo, go to file, go open. You can then go and find the image. So I'm going to upload this JPEG file. So then I'm going to upload this into a new tab. Now what we can do here with this select tool, move tool selected, you can drag this onto your project. So now we've dragged it on, you can see obviously the dimensions are a bit off. So now we'll go to editing, I'll cover these tools, I'll cover everything you need to know at the top, and I'll also cover layer styles. So if you click on your image, you can see we've got this image selected in the layers. So if we click on it, we can move and engage with this image. Now up here, we've got a very important tool called the transformation controls. So if you click on this, you'll be able to move this around and resize your image. So you can resize your image here, or you can enter in your own properties here. I like to just resize it like this though. And I'm gonna resize this to the size of the YouTube thumbnail. So there we go. And once we're happy with that, we can click enter on the keyboard or click confirm. Okay, so now we've got that. You can see here is the layer down here. Because this is acting as a background, I'm gonna rename this to just like background one. And I'm going to delete the layer below it because we don't actually need it because this image is already gonna be our background. Now you can see this layer is locked. So I'm gonna double click on this. It's gonna unlock the layer. And we can then go ahead and delete this layer by just clicking delete on the keyboard. So now we've got our background layer, which is gonna be this image. Now, if we wanted to duplicate this layer, we can right click and we've got a lot of different options here, including duplicate, layer styles, and so on, which we'll get into later. I'm just going to click on duplicate and now we can hide this one. Now this is good if you've got an image and you're making changes, but you want to keep like a, a backup of the original image in your project, just in case you make a mistake and you want to start over. So now clicking on this layer that we can see, we can now start to make edits. So this is going to be the selection tool and you can select a bit of an image and make changes to that specific selection. If you want to hide this select area, click Control D on your keyboard and it will hide it. Now moving down here, you've got the magic wand tool, which is gonna select like specific areas of your image. You've also got the quick selection tool, which again is gonna kind of like select specific areas. And with this right click and you could magic cut. There's a lot of things you can do, right? I'm not going to be able to cover everything. You also got the crop tool. You've got here the eyedropper tool. So if you wanna select a specific color, it's gonna appear down here. You've got spot healing tool, which is good for face tuning, healing brush, patch tool, red eye tool. This is all face tuning stuff. Then you've got your standard brush tool and pencil tool. So if you have brush selected, you can then choose a color down here and you go up here and you can change the size and the hardness of your brush. So we can then click and that will add kind of like a brush to the image. If you want to undo at any point, it's control Z like it normally would be. Now it's important to note, when you're making changes, if you've got the image selected here, it's gonna be making changes and kind of like brushing on this image. If you wanted to create a new layer, 
you can go here to this layer option here. That will create a new layer. And now when we draw, this is going to act as an individual layer so we can hide it. You can see because it's on top. And everything we do now with this layer, we can do individually of the image below. Now, this is important to note when you're making changes to layers. Then you've got more tools down here, like the clip and drag tool. You've got the eraser tool, which is important. Gradient tool, paintbrush tool, text tool, and so on. Moving up onto here, you've got different image tools. And here you can make adjustments. And I'll just remove this layer or hide it. And we'll just go to image adjustments. And we can then make adjustments to this background image. Maybe we want to increase brightness or decrease. Then mess around with the contrast. And you can completely edit your project and layers using these tools. So maybe you want to add vibrance up, bring the saturation up, or whatever you have in mind. You've also got like auto tone, auto contrast. This is going to automatically enhance your image. If you go to layer, you've got more things you can do, like make your layer a vector. Filter is also going to have a lot of good filters for you. So maybe you want to distort it and add a ripple effect. And whatever effects you make here are going to be made to the layer that you've got selected. You can sharpen it. There's a lot of things we can do. Let's say we also want to blur this. So let's go to filter, blur, gouache and blur. What you're going to have to do is just go through these and kind of like edit them as you go and try this out. If you click on individual layers as well, you're also going to get this layer style mode come up. And here you can add like color overlays. You can add outer glows. So if you've got logos, you can add like outer glows and drop shadows to specific logos or like images, right? So if you've got an image of, let's say, the Nike logo, you can add like an outer glow to it. This would all be done in the layer styles, which can be accessed by double clicking on the layer. And I mean, showing you what to do in Photopea in a quick 10 minute tutorial. It's kind of hard, but I've given you the overview of the program, right? Now, this is as advanced as Photoshop. You can do a lot of things in this. You're just going to have to like YouTube every time you've got a problem. So if you want to YouTube like how to remove background in Photopea, you are going to find a video and it's probably the best way to do it and the best way to learn it. That's just been an overview of Photopea. It's been a general overview. I hope that you find some value in that. Obviously, I can't have a specific direction to teach you because you all need it for different things. But let me know what you want to learn about Photopea in the comment section below. And thank you for watching.